Hey y'all, welcome back to Gearhead Garage. I'm gonna be doing a second carburetor video on my Brawler 650 CFM double pumper. Um, been a really great carburetor so far. Have a little bit of issues with startup, um, but I'll bring you guys in and let you guys check it out and then also to compare it to my old carburetor. All right guys, welcome to the bench. Um, I actually ended up making this little cool little carburetor stand. Just use some, some long bolts here and then Add the four corners and then put it into just a little uh, looks like an eight by one. It's been working really great, been able to help me, you know, get in here and work on different things. But uh, just wanted to give you guys uh, a good shot of the Brawler 650 CFM uh, mechanical secondary carburetor with the electric choke. Um, to go over why I took it off the car, I was having some troubles um, with starting. Um, some really super hard starts would would really flood and be really super rich uh, The choke itself wouldn't stay on really super long when I looked in here um, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm gonna try to get a view of this um, You can see that there's a little screw right here, and then it's riding on the cam For the electric choke so you'll see when I move this down. It'll open the electric choke um Obviously, to reset that, you just go to full throttle. But mine was bent to the side to where it wasn't actually riding on the cam whenever I got it. Um, not sure if the carburetor I got from Summit Racing was, um, you know, used on a vehicle or just might have got messed up in shipping. But, I mean, that's really been the only issue thus far that I've seen. Um, but what I did was just bend it slightly back over so it could ride on that cam. That way also too it'll have good engagement with the teeth right here on this um, electric choke cam and whenever the vehicle warms up it'll warm up in stages just like it did on my um on my edelbrock and then whenever it's it's fully warm you know it won't be able to uh it won't be able to prohibit it from or this screw right here won't be touching the cam which will allow the uh the blades and everything in there to be fully closed and have the idle set exactly where I want it to be. So just to walk over how to adjust this little piece right here for your, it's called your fast idle screw. Um, the instructions here, right, it says fast idle speed. That's what I'm referring to is that little cam and that little screw on the back side of this piece right here. You can probably see it a little bit better when I go to full throttle like that. Let me shine the light on it. It's that little screw right there. And you can adjust it, right? It's it's way easier to adjust off the car, so I recommend leaving it to where it's at. But if you do have to adjust it on the car, easiest way to do that is like with a quarter inch wrench, you can actually get in here and, and turn it one way or another. I've already got mine set where I want it to be set since I had to go bend this tab back. Um, but let's take a deeper dive into the carburetor. So the first and most obvious thing that I'll point out is, right, this little piece right here. This is what makes it an actual double pumper, right? There's a secondary pump. You can see it's still got a little bit of gas in it that pumps and squirts gas into the secondaries to where on a vacuum secondary, this is a completely different type of carburetor, so um, still works roughly the same. The engine will pull vacuum and it will actually open these blades here, right? And then um, that'll allow more airflow to be pulled through the Venturis and then it'll pull more fuel into the carburetor. Right, so how that works is, I mean, it acts as like um, when air is pulled through there, it increases the velocity of the air, which pulls more fuel, right? Um, then also too, this is how the choke works on a Edelbrock. Similar to this, like I said, mine wasn't riding exactly on the cam, so that's fully open. Um, also, too, this is an Edelbrock 600 CFM um, electric choke carburetor. You can see the big difference is here, right? So, um, it's got a lot more space, like, on the sides where air actually doesn't go into the carburetor. just gets, like, trapped in there. Um, also, too, the, um, the main... Um, the main throttle, right? So all the cruising throttle is also smaller. So let me go to full 
open, right, and move this out of the way. So you've got all that in the way, right, versus on this carburetor. Also, too, this has um, different Venturi's, too. So these have four down legs. A lot less restriction through the carburetor, right? Which, right, more CFM, um, the better, right? Um, also, too, so we'll go to idle mixtures here, idle mixture screws, right? Um, so it's got two in the front here to where on the brawler it has one right here, one right here. And then it'll have two on the other side, which is really great. Um, four corner idle. Right there and right there. Awesome. Um, this is the pump for the main circuit here. Uh, this is your adjustment for um, your uh, idle, right? Idle airspeed right here. Um, it's got a bunch of different cams and stuff on it um, that the Edelbrock doesn't have. Um, the way that this Edelbrock works, it has what's called metering rods that are on the inside of this carburetor. Um, so let me go ahead and open this thing up and I will show you the Edelbrock carburetor and kind of how it, how it works and how it functions. You going to be good in here while I'm working on this carburetor? Y'all, this is my, my baby GSP Remy. She's a joy, full of, full of energy, as you can see. She loves the Mustang. Come on, Remy, let's get in. She loves to take rides. See, she's ready. I gotta finish tuning it up for the spring. You wanna go? You just wanna drive. I gotta drive, you can't drive. Just a heads up. You gotta, you gotta have more coordination than you got right now. All right, come on, get out of there. Come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's see, she's not going to get out. Come on. Okay. All right, now that I've got this Edelbrock carburetor separated, you can see a little bit better about how it works. First thing I'll go over is the floats. Um, there is some adjustment with the Edelbrock carburetor on how you set the floats. I can't exactly remember how you do it, um, but I'm sure it has something to do with screwing that in or out, but you have to stick, I think it says like a 5 8 or 3 quarter inch um, drill bit through there to make sure you've got your float, float level height right. Um, so this is the pump cam on an Edelbrock, right? So you can see that it works like that. There's a lever on there that pushes down on this, which pushes on that right there, that spring, which then pushes fuel up through the squirters. Um, obviously this being a vacuum secondary carburetor, it does not have a rear set of squirters. Everything is controlled by vacuum, right? So as this little blade here, opens or closes, it increases or decreases the airspeed, which pulls fuel, more or less fuel, through the secondary venturis. Um, also, too, on an Edelbrock carburetor, this is where the jets are located. You can see them right down in there. So that's your primary jet and your secondary jet. Pulls fuel up and through here into your primary and then up and through somewhere over here, probably through there, through your secondary. Um, also too, you've got metering rods and metering springs in a Edelbrock carburetor. So there's different spring tensions that you can get here based on the different vacuum levels that you want, um, which will control when these metering rods are pulled um, 
up and out of the way of the primary jet, allowing more fuel to flow through. Um, really super easy to tune. That's why I went with an Edelbrock carburetor first. Um, hadn't done a lot of carburetor tuning. Was really just interested in like how it all worked, why it was um, the way it was. I like the mechanical piece of it um, versus today everything's kind of computer controlled. Um, but it's really kind of super simple. Everything's, <laughs> you know, just basic physics. Um, and airspeed, pulling fuel, right, because there's a vacuum in the engine pulling fuel. The engine's going to pull as much fuel as it needs, right? Um, so really super mechanical, really super, um, I think, cool. But that's kind of how the Edelbrock carburetor works. Now we will dive into the brawler and how it works. Right, for the main event, the brawler carburetor. Um, so first thing, I was about to take one of the bowls off. One thing that I already immediately really do not like is if you look at the end of these, there's no slot for a screwdriver. It is a 5 sixteenths nut. I mean, like, people have been using slotted heads since the beginning of time, it seems like. But for whatever reason, they did not want to do it on this. So, very weird. Don't know why they did that. Do not like it. Because if you're trying to make a quick change, let's say if you're at the track or whatever, you got to pull out all your sockets and everything or just have this ready to go which would totally be okay but it's just like why not have that all right i'm gonna bust these loose make sure it's all locked in okay Take the bottom ones out first. For sure, it does not make it super easy to get into there, but I mean, it is what it is. It's just really weird. Some gas coming out. There are, looks like a couple of. I don't know if those come off or not. I'm not going to try to pull them off. Alright, I'm going to finish taking this apart, but just wanted to show you that. Alright, so this is the Brawler 650 CFM carburetor. I just got the bowl off. You can see here the float. Now that comes up and the adjustment for the float level is right back here so mine set about there i did have to adjust it out of the box to make sure i had you know fuel like right right at the sight window here that's another really super cool thing about these brawler carbs um, they've got sight windows on both sides so you can see exactly where your fuel level's at um, right so you've got your your pumper here right there which will pump fuel up through one of these um, circuits here, through the jet, um, and up into the squirter. Okay. Um, you've got your... So this is the anodized metering block. It has a 6.5 vacuum power valve here, so that means when the engine gets 6 to six and a half vacuum this power valve will actually open and start, start to allow fuel to flow through the venturis um, these are your two main jets here the jets that come in them look like well this one is a 70 and a 70 on the main block but um Essentially what all these different things do is just controls the flow of fuel, right? So like you got your main jets that are right here that flow up through to here. You've got your power valve which controls fuel flowing up and through the Venturis. And it goes through all these different little holes in here 
um, which control fuel flow uh, to the right spots in the carburetor. So definitely more complicated than a nettle brock. Um, right, so you've got your jets, you've got your power valve, uh, you got a, your different levels of adjustment for your fuel height, uh, and then you've got your, your pumper down here, which is just a little diaphragm that, that squirts fuel. All right, so I'm going to zip this thing back together. Um, one of the things I'm going to do um, for this carburetor is I'm actually, this will be in another video, I'm going to take my uh, distributor out and do some tuning on it. Um, and then I'm actually not going to be running the vacuum canister, um, the vacuum advance on the distributor. I'm just going to be running the mechanical advance only in it just to see the difference in how it drives. Um, but one quick thing, the power valve right here, once that opens up, it allows fuel to enter into here. And then it comes up and through the through the venturis, right? Um, before this um, opens up, everything is running um, either through the idle circuit or through the um, the pumper or the squirter. Sorry. All right. All right, so we've got the back side of the carburetor off. Something that is very interesting to me is that on the back I actually have a plastic float that is set up for jet extensions. Um, that was not communicated whenever I was looking at this carburetor on Summit Racing. I think that's a good upgrade that I got. I'm not sure that it's supposed to come with this. This to me means maybe somebody was in here and had returned the carburetor to Summit and they refurbished it and didn't look in the bowls or anything. Or they just left it in there, which is totally okay with me. Um, but these are the secondary jets and secondary metering block. Um, nothing crazy on this. No power valve or anything. Really, you just got your, your idle mixture right, right here and right here for your rear. And then you've got your your jets here that kick in um, whenever the air comes through there and is forced through there and then it pushes the fuel up through the um, through the the main venturis here um, really nothing nothing overly complicated again really just more like fluid dynamics and physics and um, things like that but the rear jets are a 74 so 70s up front, 74s in the back, um, and that's pretty much it. Same thing as up front, got the squirter in the back. Again, this uh, plastic float with this setup for jet extensions is um, interesting. Um, and then you've got your, right, your fuel level adjustment right here. That's pretty much it. Um, and that's kind of how and uh, what the two differences are between the two carburetors and a little bit about how they work. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the differences between, you know, my new Brawler mechanical secondary carburetor and my original Edelbrock 600 CFM uh, vacuum secondary carburetor. Go both great carburetors. Um, some different little intricacies, obviously, with the new one. Um, really understood the old one, but definitely looking forward to, to tuning this thing some more in some upcoming videos. Um, Check out my next video. It will be about distributor and distributor tuning and kind of what to do and how to pull it out, change the springs. It's an MSD distributor pro billet. Um, so we'll be taking a look at that. Check out my next video. Thanks guys.